Good evening, everyone. Your first forecast is brought to you by Stored at Home Rent to Own Portable Buildings in Gina. We did see cooler conditions today, and that's because we saw a little bit of rain, keeping those temperatures in check. But by tomorrow, our rain chances will diminish, and that means hot air will return across the region. So we are expecting oppressive heat and it will get even warmer as we head toward the weekend. Here's a look at your planner. Temperatures starting off around 76 degrees by noon, 88, and then we're going to climb into the upper 90s, and you know that means uh, it's going to feel like well into the 100s, but we could see triple digits as we head into the weekend. We'll talk more about that on ABC 31 News. Welcome to ABC 31 News Tonight. I'm Scott Beadle. Today is the first day of qualifying for the November primaries. ABC 31's Joanna Phillips has more on who's running for what in our big story tonight. Qualifying began today for the November primaries. This morning, three candidates paid a visit to the clerk of court's office to qualify for the race for the mayor of the city of Alexandria. Attorneys Katherine Davidson and Kay McGill and District 26 State Representative Jeff Hall. Here's a statement from qualifier Katherine Davidson, who announced her plans to run for mayor earlier this week. What Alexandria needs is it needs inclusion. It needs to really put itself in a position where everyone is welcome to the table. You know, all the citizens um, need to get together. We need to really bring everyone to the table so that we can move Alexandria forward. You have to have some genuine leadership, and that means that means being the catalyst to get people to the table. You know, not everyone's going to agree, and they may come kicking and screaming, but you got to get them there. I'm running for mayor, and if not running against anyone, I'm running for mayor. Both Davidson and Hall announced their campaigns before current mayor, Jock Roy, announced his decision to not run for a fourth term. And yesterday afternoon, attorney Kay McGills released a brief statement about her plans to qualify. Qualifying will last until Friday, June 20th, and will continue to provide information on candidates each day until qualifying ends. Joanna Phillips, ABC 31 News. Both incumbent Neil Kavanaugh and former Mayor Roy Hebron have qualified to run for Mayor of Ball. However, most observers say that race could be headed to court. That's because Hebron served time in a federal prison, and there appears to be a question about whether he could serve if elected. The state attorney general's office refused to give a statement on the issue. Natchitoches police report the death of a six-month-old baby kidnapped from Mayberry Trailer Park. It happened last night. The mother told officers two suspects began beating on her door and then sprayed her in the face with what she believes to be mace. She told officers she fled and then circled back to find the child missing. Last night, authorities found the baby after a report of a fire near Breda Avenue, and that child had some obvious burns. The baby was eventually flown to Shreveport, where the child died. No names are being released by NPD at this time. A four-vehicle crash in LaSalle Parish killed an Alexandria man yesterday afternoon, and one driver is being charged in that death. 86-year-old William Lewis was killed in the collision, and 30-year-old Londell Smith of West Monroe is charged with negligent homicide. Troopers say it happened on Highway 28 East on the LaSalle Rapids Parish line. Smith is accused of trying to pass another vehicle and colliding head-on with Lewis's pickup. Grant deputies arrest a man accused of operating an illegal tattoo parlor in the Prospect community, and they say they also found drugs there. The parlor operator is 33-year-old Alvy Lowery. Deputies also arrested 34-year-old Samantha Paul. Both of them are from Dry Prawl. He's charged with unlawfully operating a body art facility, and both of them are charged with drug offenses. A traffic stop in Grant Parish results in the arrest of a Colfax man for drugs and resisting arrest. Deputies say they found 37-year-old Jared Jermaine Cunningham in possession of synthetic marijuana. He's also accused of ripping the microphone off of the uniform of the arresting deputy while trying to take him into custody. Louisiana College President Rick Brewer says his attorneys will file an objection to a magistrate's ruling in federal courts that would permit a lawsuit against Brewer to go forward. The issue here is whether Brewer committed racial discrimination by denying an applicant for an athletic post because of his Jewish heritage. Brewer has denied ever making such a statement and says if that matter does go to trial, he looks forward to defending himself. The Central Louisiana De Democratic Women held their monthly meeting today with two guest speakers. The speakers, Janisha Burley and Danielle Gray, 
attended not only as guest speakers, but also as the recipients of the Central Louisiana Democratic Women's Scholarship. Burley currently attends Northwestern State University, working towards a career in social work. Gray is studying pre-law and political science at the University of Louisiana at Lafayette. Tomorrow evening, the Department of Transportation and Development will hold a public meeting to seek input and provide information related to proposed alternatives for traffic flow and safety improvements along MacArthur Drive in Alexandria. This is a phase three of the feasibility study to look at some traffic flow and safety improvements along the US 71 corridor there in Alexandria. A couple of years ago, we previously had public hearings on phase one and two, and so this is the third phase um, as we kind of move down that corridor and look at different ways to improve it. Um, so what we're wanting is for uh, members of the public to come out and take a look at the different alternatives. We hear that people would like to see better traffic flow. They would like to see improved safety, uh, especially for pedestrians. Um, they would like to see better um, access to businesses, you know, that are located perhaps on the service road. And so um, we're taking all of that into consideration as we, you know, hold this phase three public meeting. That meeting will take place tomorrow evening from 5 to 7 at the Alexandria Convention Center. Residents are encouraged to show up and weigh in. A $400,000 federal grant is being awarded to CLETA to create the Senla Innovation Center. Now it's expected to create some 250 jobs and lure a half million dollars in private investments. That announcement comes from 5th District Congressman Ralph Abraham's office. Today, a Rapids Parish Library teamed up with Healthy Blue at the main library in downtown Alexandria to host a school supply giveaway. ABC 31 Char Thomas was there and has the story. Sin Law students are ready to head back to school thanks to the generosity of Healthy Blue and the Rapids Parish Library. The library held its annual back to school giveaway. Children were able to select a box filled with supplies to get them started for the upcoming school year. I got scissors, markers, erasers, and color pencils, and pens, and, and a sharpener. And a pencil sharpener. And what was it? A tissue. A tissue. Not to mention the first 500 children received one bag of supplies which left them thankful. I would like to thank Healthy Blue and the library for what they have done making all this because some people aren't as fortunate as we are. After getting their supplies, the children enjoyed balloon entertainment and face painting. Both children and parents left pleased with the free services. I didn't know they had such a good uh, Facebook group, so I learned about it through Facebook, which was awesome. And if they can just keep advertising that way, I'll be able to just look and we can pop in and out. Char Thomas, ABC 31 News. Upward Bound Trio students are prepared to take on the upcoming school year as they completed the summer program last night. A group of high school scholars have been hitting the books hard to get a jump start on the new school year. The federal program aims to provide resources to low-income students to enter college and make them successful in and out of the classroom. The Louisiana Child Passenger Safety Task Force, Louisiana Highway Safety Commission, and Louisiana State Police are hosting a free child passenger safety seat checkup this Saturday. This Saturday from 10 to 1, we have a core seat check event at Walker Automotive on MacArthur Drive. Um, there will be nationally certified technicians there to install your seats. We have a free uh, limited number of seats to give away, so first come, first serve. There will not be any rain checks, um, but if, um, if you need a car seat, come out and get it while they last. Um, it's, a, it's an issue that we have, not only in our community, but uh, across the nation. Three out of four car seats are installed incorrectly with at least two errors. I know personally I've been certified for the last 11 years and I've checked over a thousand car seats and only two have been installed correctly um, by people that were not certified. So please take advantage of this opportunity and come out and get your car seat checked. It, it won't take what about 15 or 20 minutes of your time. That checkup is Saturday from 10 to 1. Lanyap Theater has a new production as they celebrate their 10 year anniversary. It is a southern comedy called The Foreigner. It's basically set in rural Georgia in Tillman County in this really nice lodge. It's like a hunting lodge. And you've got this, uh, this guy that comes in uh, from England, and he's very shy, incredibly, incredibly shy. And his friend that's with him says, you know, 
it, it'll be fine. You're around all these people. He starts having a panic attack. I can't talk to people. I just can't. I don't have a personality. I don't know how to do this. And he says, well, I tell you what. I'll just tell him you don't speak any English, and I'll tell him you're a foreigner. And so, in this very small little town, they think it is such an enigma. He's such a um, uh, this is amazing to them, right? right? So, while he's going around the house pretending to not understand English or speak it, he ends it up hearing all the information about all the secrets that are going on in this home, and right. it is just hysterical. The foreigner opens tomorrow and runs through Sunday at the Coughlin Saunders Performing Arts Center in downtown Alexandria. You can visit lanyaptheater.com to purchase tickets and to get those show times. Only one doctor brings health right to your home. Every day is a new chance for change, and everyone can start right now. Make an appointment with Dr. Oz. Check in for your daily checkup. Welcome back, everyone. We are going to see plenty of sunshine tomorrow. It's going to be toasty because our rain chances will diminish. Of course, that just means those temperatures will continue to heat up. So our heat indices tomorrow between 104 to 110. And we're going to see some of the hottest temperatures of the year this weekend. We're going to have slight relief from the heat as we make our way into next week. So it looks like we have to wait almost a week before we see a change in our temperatures. But so far, it has been a little bit warmer than normal. Our average high temperature so far for the first half of July is around 94 degrees and our normal is around 92 degrees. So we're just a couple of degrees above normal. That average could even be a little bit higher because temperatures will continue to warm up in the next few days. Precipitation wise, we are just a little bit above normal right now. Our warmest temperature so far this year is 98 degrees, and that was reached in the first two days of July. So we're going to see even warmer temperatures as we head into the weekend. But today, not so. Temperatures only in the upper 80s in places where we saw the rain. So in Natchez and also Alexandria, our high was around 89 degrees, a little bit warmer in Leesville, around 92 degrees. But dew point still in the 70s, so the air is still very steamy outside. And so it's very humid out there. As we make our way into the latter part of today, I think any rain out there will continue to die down, and we're going to see clear conditions as we head into tomorrow. Maybe a stray shower in the overnight, but it doesn't look like it will make it to our area. Maybe just a sprinkle or two, but overall, I think we are going to start off with dry conditions, and as high pressure continues to build in, we are going to continue to see dry conditions across the area. So it's definitely going to be hot out there. We're talking about highs in the upper 90s, and our heat indices, if you factor in the humidity, will feel like 110 degrees, especially if you stand in the sun. So 100 degrees for the next few days. It's going to definitely be hot out there, so hopefully your air conditioner is working or just seek a lot of shade if you have to be outside. So our average high temperatures are around 92 degrees, and we're going to see those temperatures well above that. Tonight, it will be mild and humid. Temperatures around 76 degrees in Alexandria, 77 in Boise, Oak Grove around 74 degrees, partly cloudy skies, and a few clouds tomorrow with highs in the upper 90s. And then we start to see those triple digits come into the picture as we head into your Friday, 100 degrees, century mark, into the weekend and into next week. That's because we're not going to see a lot of rain chances. As we move into Tuesday, though, our rain chances will return, and that will put those temperatures back down into the lower 90s. So 91 for the high on Tuesday, 93 degrees on Wednesday. So a little bit more comfortable conditions, a little bit of a relief as we head into next week. Scott? All right, thanks, Kim. Coming up in sports, the LSUA baseball team adds some depth up the middle. When temperatures rise, some don't always have the luxury of turning on a thermostat. That's why KLAX TV and area businesses have teamed up to form the Spring Fan Drive for the elderly. You can help by dropping off a van at a location near you. Fans will be collected and distributed by each parish's council on aging provider. Remember, keeping cool isn't something that comes easy for everyone. Help us to bring some relief from the summer heat to those less fortunate.
Good evening and welcome back to KLAX ABC 31 Sports. I'm Zach Seminar. The LSUA baseball team bolstered its middle infield with the addition of Trevor Carrier, who signed his national letter of intent to join the Generals this week. The 5'7 Louisiana native graduated from Westgate High School, where he was named an all district second team pitcher in 2017, along with accolades from the best of the tech honorable mention list in 2018. Carrier will join the Generals for the 2019 season. Well, thanks for watching ABC 31 News. Have a great night. Medical examiner. Detective. Homicide. Well, I can't write you a prescription. These are my day clips. Ding. Then I had to chase this guy all the way down to Fenway. We should do this again sometime. Rizzoli and Isles. A perfect match. Weekends 11 on KLAX TV. To catch a killer. You gather the evidence. There's blood on the screen. And build a picture perfect case. One of you stabbed her 12 times. Hold on, there, FBI. Bones Weekends. Weekends on KLAX TV.